Should your band or a DJ play requests during your wedding reception? Well, it all depends on if they're going to protect you or not. It's kind of a universal truth that if you're an entertainer, a band, a DJ, if you're playing a wedding reception, you're going to get requests. And a lot of people who may be newer to that world think, well, if someone requested a song, I should play it because that means everyone wants to hear it, right? I hope by now we all know that that's not true. And more so than just trying to please the guests who are at the reception and dancing, it's more about, in my opinion, about protecting the bride and groom. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. Every wedding reception tends to have three different kinds of requests from guests. The first one being a good request. Like, let's say I'm in the middle of a set, I got the vibe going, and I'm going to play Usher, Oh My God. Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. But someone wanted to hear Usher, DJ got us falling in love instead. Sure, cool, no problem. I'll play that instead. Not a big deal. It already fit the vibe of the dance floor. It's a similar tempo from where I was playing before, so I know it's going to work. Not a big deal. I'll play those requests every single time. The second kind of request come from people who say that they're really close with the newlyweds and they'd love to hear this song. Now, it's always something like, oh my gosh, I've known the bride since eighth grade in our senior year of high school. We had a dance recital and dance to Perfect Day by Hoku. Can you play it next? Now, personally for me, I love that song, but I probably wouldn't play it at a wedding reception. It's not very popular. Not a lot of people know it. But also, and you'll hear me say this a lot in these videos, it ain't Cho Day. I'm sure you're friends with the bride, and I'm sure you guys had a dance routine in high school, but this is her wedding, not yours, and I doubt most people want to see you do your high school dance routine. Now, if it's the bride coming up and saying, hey, me and my friend had this song in high school, we want to hear it, of course I'm going to play it. You always play the request of the bride and groom, every time. And I'll touch on why that is right after this. The third kind of requests are bad requests, and it's usually coming from a groomsman, something like, hey man, when me and Billy, uh, the groom, were in third grade, uh, he pooped his pants in school and Ace the Bass was playing, so could you play it next? It'd be hilarious. <laughs> No, Chaz, I'm not going to do that because it's going to be embarrassing for the groom. And again, ain't show day. So at the beginning of the video, I was talking about protecting the bride and groom with requests. This is what I mean by that. And this is when it comes up. Every band or DJ at a wedding reception wants to rock the crowd and make it the biggest party ever and fill the dance floor all night. And yeah, that's a big part of it. But more so than that, you have to be sure you're protecting the bride and groom and looking out for their best interests while you're playing your sets. Because as the DJ or the band leader or entertainer, you're kind of the last resort when it comes to yes, playing a request or no, not playing a request. And it's my advice that I would relay this to your band or your DJ. If they get any kind of hint that it's going to be something silly or stupid or even worse, embarrassing to the bride and groom, absolutely don't play it. There's so many times I'm DJing a wedding and I hear somebody request a song. And I just know in the back of my head, this is isn't going to work. This is going to make the bride or groom look stupid or embarrassed. And then I look stupid. And then it's just a lose, lose, lose for everybody. So whenever I'm playing a wedding and get requests, and I always get a lot of them, I have to make sure I'm looking out for the bride and groom because I don't want anything to embarrass them or make them feel stupid. I always describe it like this. The couple at a wedding are both the lead singers of the band and I'm just the drummer. I'm there in the back, setting the mood, setting the tone and trying to make them both look and sound amazing. And at the end of the day, that's who I'm playing for. If the bride and groom or the newly wedded couple have a good time, everyone there is gonna have a good time as well. So really, they're always my first priority. So when it comes to playing requests, bride and groom's requests, always get played next pretty much universally every single time if there's a third person involved who's maybe paying the band or the dj like a parent a guardian a loved one they have some say too but then when it comes to guests you have to have that dj or band leader really use their best judgment and think okay this person wants to hear this song is it going to work is it going to kind of flow and fit the vibe we're setting and is it going to do anything to make the bride and groom feel any kind of embarrassment it's those typical requests, you know, if someone wants to hear Baby Shark at a wedding or the chicken dance or something stupid like that. Or let's say the groom went to Michigan State and someone says, hey, can you play the U of M fight song? That'd be so funny. No, it wouldn't be. And also, ain't your day. So when you're hiring a band, an entertainer or a DJ for your wedding reception, just make sure that they have, you know, enough musical knowledge and what I like to call dance floor discipline to know when to play a request and when not to play a request. Because a lot of times telling a guest no and basically pissing them off is sometimes the best thing you can do for the bride and groom. And I know that's a difficult decision and pretty much every single wedding reception I have a guest get pissed off at me. But again, my priority is the bride and groom and making sure they look and sound amazing at their wedding. On next week's episode, we're going to talk about my one microphone rule that your band leader or DJ absolutely has to start using moving forward. Because if they don't, it could end up making you look really stupid at your own wedding. But we'll talk about that more next week because planning a wedding can be a lot. 
But you shouldn't get stuck on those little details. Just cut the f cake. <laughs>